Next, I'm going to show a sort of random grab bag of features provided mostly via plugins that are going to be useful for anyone who is accustomed to an IDE like experience. So first off, let's execute a file from within Vim. So I'm going to edit a non-existent file. You can see at the bottom I'm typing uh, hello.py. Next, I'm going to create a shebang for executing it. And that's going to be user bin env python. And all this will do is print hello to standard out. I'm going to repeat that line about 10 times with 10 P. I'm going to save and then hit leader two, my shortcut for executing the command. In case you're curious, this command, this mapping rather, is this. You can see at the bottom of the screen, it writes and then executes the current file. Okay, with that done, let's move back to the library. I'm, I'm switching buffers with square brackets B. Now, there's a get JSON function right at the bottom. I want to look at the test for that. So I can get the test for this file using the projectionist plugin um, and typing AV. And here, if you look at the left hand pane and the second to last line, you'll see the folder underscore underscore tests, which is my convention for test files here. And I've sort of taught Vim this. Now, once I'm within this get JSON spec, it's it block, I can run test nearest to execute all that. You can see that Vim opens up a little pane there and only the get JSON test is run, whereas the others are skipped. Now that's how to test. The next thing that might be interesting is to look at some documentation for a function. I'm going to call on the language server protocol here and uh, execute the hover command. And there you can see a bunch of types and other information. Now imagine I want to do some snippets. Let's say that this line here to the end is something I see myself needing often. So I can open up the ulti snip plugin I just tab to complete the name after tabbing Alt at the bottom and create my own snippet. So what I'm going to do is just copy what I have here. In fact, I, I created this earlier, so I'm just going to delete this. And let's delete within this brackets and put the dollar sign zero signifier here, which means the position for the cursor. Now, if I go back here, all I have to type is JS. That was the second argument to snip, the first argument to snip it on the left. And then you can see at the very bottom of the overlay, there's a new source snips colon JSON. And now I press control Q here and bingo, I've got that snippet working. Now I'm gonna go and close this for now. And let's look at how Git interacts with all this. So I'm gonna save this file and I'm going to save the pi file and then run the git command via the git fugitive plugin. And with colon G, we get this sort of git window. I can use capital P to do a git add patch. And here we see the addition of the JSON stringify function. Let's stage that for the hell of it. And also we see this unstaged file. I press S to stage that. Now I press CC to actually do a commit. I don't want to save this because this is some uh, junk I've just added. So I'm going to use ZQ to back out of all this. One last thing worth mentioning is the call comment plugin. So you can see with the current line there, if I type GCC, it will be commented using the syntax that's appropriate for the current file type. And if I type the same thing again, it'll be uncommented. This also works for larger visual selections like so. I haven't given the Python language any love in this screencast yet. So let me correct that by demonstrating a mainstay in IDE development, that of renaming a function across many files automatically. So I'm gonna open up Vim and find the audio tools file. Within this, there's a function combine audio files that I'd like to rename. So I'm going to look at every use of this and you can see it's being called into the splitter.py file and then called a couple of times within it. So now I'm going to rename that function using the language server protocol to combine WAV files since that's a more accurate description of what this does. I'll give that a second and there it's done. Now let me visit this splitter.py file 
and let's have a look for the WAV. Yes, and you can see that it's now importing combined WAV files and also it is being used as such. And we can confirm that with git diff here.